I, David Condella, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of member of the Board of Education of Diamond Lake School District 76 in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the laws of the State of Illinois to the best of my ability. I further swear that I shall respect taxpayer interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I further swear that I shall respect taxpayer interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. And I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to see changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. And I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to see changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels.
So we are now adjourning this meeting. It is a formal order because we have CDA, which means uh, in order to then call to order the board in its new form. So I make a motion to adjourn the session meeting. So. Second. Second. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Oh. Castle, yes. Water? Yes. Yes. So for All right. So now the comments for the business meeting for Tuesday, June 20th, for District 76. Roll call, please. Here. Yes, here. 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 Yes, here. And no. Here. At this time, we open up the floor for any public comments on our agenda items. Do you have any public comments on our agenda items today? Having no comments, we're going to move on to our next item, which is recognition. At this time, I would like to recognize our city leaders. Um, this past year, we were back in the city. It's a really small sample of all the great work that they've done, all the great work that they've done for our district, our teachers, our students, and our staff. They gave individual contributions to teachers. They gave classroom contributions to benefit all the children. They also gave school contributions as well as district contributions. You know, up to the exceeding, um, this year was almost 12,000, but that was not included the year from last year, which was almost 15,000, which funded the new um, Western audio system, as well as each of the projection teams and individual staff colleges at um, the schools. So, and they just continue to work um, tirelessly, and they are going to present us with a great gift tonight that we're going to use to start a tradition of building a sign. Network sign at each of the schools in West Ocean to join us for the summer and the fall. So I have here to support, we hope, probably the project in its entirety um, because of their generosity. We're tired of this hour, so I want to thank the leadership that's here tonight, which is Mrs. Connor and Juan, and Ms. Stephen. I know that there was one person who um, couldn't make it tonight because I think she's moving. Um, <laughs> I know in a couple of days, but um, Jen Lubaki, who served as our president this year, and you know, I just can't say enough about these ladies because they're always there for us. Anytime of night, I shoot an email or a text, um, they respond back right away, just like a staff member would, and guess what? They're not getting paid for it. So um, I love that about them, and I know Dina works for us, and she was also recognized by her colleagues as a diamond this year. So that just goes to show you a lot about their spirit, their character, their passion, and their determination um, to do what's best for District 76. So I just wanted to take an opportunity to publicly recognize them. Um, I know we tell them a lot, but it's never enough. So thank you, Dina, and thank you, Margaret, and thank you, Jen, who couldn't be here tonight. So we'd just like to present you with some flowers. It's a very, very small picture. District 76 PTO and Jen Spockley, I can't say enough great things. We're going to miss her so much. Um, Joy Hale also has been a, a president of ours, but we would like to present um, District 76 Board of Education with a check for $15,000 to be used towards a sign for West Oak. So we look forward to seeing that. Yes, and we look forward to having you a part of that. So thank you again thank for all you your generosity so and your support. Thank, thank you. you. We don't have a large district, which means that the people who are working for the PTO are looking at the more energy and being reference and appreciate it. Alright. Alright, so uh, next up we have a presentation.
Um, and a third expectation was to support a high quality professional district staff. Um, we gave out a lead survey again this year to find out what their interest as well as their needs are for some professional development. We have a professional development calendar, so there is professional development every month um, and every institute day and on an annual basis. It's job embedded, so we have the instructional media specialist, excuse me, letter media specialist that I hope that they want to teach the teachers directly in the classroom, technology, and great technology right for instruction. Um, we also had some science training that I know is not going to provide this year um, to all of the health and language teachers as well as the resource staff. Um, we had a lot of work with our gifted and talented advanced curriculums in those positions as a differentiation specialist for you. Um, they go into priority to the image of social and social learning. Um, this, this, this past year, we'll continue to actually review the curriculum of science staff. So even though the target was complete, we had a survey, we had a calendar, we had a plan in place, with the expectation that the professional development will continue to grow until the instructor and one of us is going to be on the end of all. It's a sheltered instruction occupational protocol, observation protocol. For which one is it? Sure, we'll just look it up. Yeah, so it is, it's the, uh, a way of presenting um, information to English learners in a way that's comprehensible, in a way that um, kind of takes the best practices and modalities and really structures them in um, kind of a checklist of all of the best practices for English learners, which in turn benefits all students who are in the classroom is a mixed um, mix classroom. And so um, I did some intensive uh, trainings with those eight different components. And so we did one component per month where we really delved deep into figuring out what those different components were, looking at some examples of what a lot of the video was for implementing. And then um, I went into the classroom and did some observations and did some feedback in terms of how they were implementing the And there was some sharing. Also, about the strategies with that teachers that was going on in the degree months. Can someone speak a little bit about how the development of skills and math assessment is going? I know that's a multi year sort of thing, but just kind of how teachers respond to it, the skills they have now, how they're applying it. This assessment here, the one you can read on the right, tell me about that one too. Strategy subject on assessments and on side training. I'm correct on that. I believe that we're looking at the main assessment based on the body of the standards that. Yeah, they're creating local assessments in the classroom that will sit across the grid. So if you and I are both teaching third grade, we're not assessing differently. Like we're assessing the same skills, the same kind of assessments. Right. Our overall goal is to become more data driven and understanding how the data is right. Allowing assessment to drive targeted. Correct. Can someone speak to just kind of how we're resting on that and how the skills are thinking about it? Sure. Um, you know, many great little teams which I'll also speak about in my, in my next goal. Um, what they're working on is really, really developing. We're not fully there yet. We have, uh, I can speak for a great speed grade before that. We have common assessments developed in that. Uh, we're working on common assessments in you know, the science that they take care of itself. Social studies is what we're working on as well. And it's really, Taking, um, it's taking the content that's being put in the classroom and the standards and giving us a different look that map doesn't necessarily give us a definite mark. You know, just remove both from the table for a second. It's the, the more like the everyday, maybe not the week in, week out, but maybe every couple of weeks snapshot of how our kids are doing against the uh, standards.
alternative. Uh, actually, they do establish a water facility plan that's in the non-known process throughout the year for the site of finding water and so on. Boots on the ground, it's a process goal. So we passed the $1.4 million referendum, and we are working with our architects and our partners to really establish that. We've established a facility plan, now it's not the So we're really excited to present you uh, that information really get our team in place and start the four point in the summer. Um, the last thing we developed the engagement engagement plan for financial information. We started doing some financial information financial reports as well as produce a uh, monthly newsletter and information on our website. So we're constantly trying to communicate out uh, what our financial targets are, who our partners are, and some of the good things that are going on in some of the components of the student service. But that is always not going at the location. And as with the first first goal, there we're going to be trying to utilize everything we currently subscribe to, which is streamline what we do, and not have to utilize any resources back in that. So the library facility plan is complete? I guess I should phrase that, but really the short term facility plan in the next two to three years is complete. Okay. Five okay. years is still kind of a a work in progress of how we how much work we get done this summer, see how much we get done with the referendum, and the rest is going to be done by local So it's a short term plan, but it's two to three years is complete, the five year plan is still in place. And so have we seen the three year plan? It's been really part of the design we had in white. We've listed out that what this summer is, but next summer is the summer after that. We're talking about spending um, $4 million. Two summers, and we had some projects listed. Now we have to kind of give an update on that one. Seahorse is really important, really hard on identifying some of the targets that folks were going on identifying, and then just really piecing together the time period was going to be consulted, whatever the amount of scale that was going to be in place for construction partners. And is that on the website, or is that just on the recent one point? It's on a referendum page. You have a facility plan. It was, it was like the referendum slash facility plan page. So, again, we'll make sure that, that all the documents are kind of like, constantly updated as far as we're going to get all the documents together. That's a great idea. Because right now, it's a little bit of a parent's communication game with the other parents that continues with uh, goal five, which is excellence of communication, which is on the same subject, but focusing on the expectations of communicating to all our stakeholders, uh, except for in different languages and modalities. Um, it all says that we've completed all tasks, and with communication, it's always going to be an ongoing process. It's always going to clarify, just like as we talked about earlier, I want to clarify that uh, any information we provide in our community uh, for all stakeholders, we want to make sure we're doing efficient in this manner. Um, over the course of the year, we've communicated in both English and Spanish, and with our services, we always provided a translation tool. Uh, this journey is built into a lot of our technology communications. Um, through our upgraded district-wide websites and websites in schools, it's been streamlined and easy for all of our for all of our stakeholders to see events that are happening, current news, and any information that is very important to everybody. Uh, we've increased our social media presence on many different platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and right now, even with a web education stream on YouTube Live. Um, Providing opportunities to break uh, down barriers to make sure that everybody gets the availability of events that are happening. Um, and even more importantly, that it, with a parent teacher conference, is adding abilities to be able to sign up digitally. So, not having to make calls or even sign up for the day, I'll be able to do it way in advance, which has been very helpful in happening with parties in the schools and with our families as well. Uh, enhancing participation in school and district events is our expectation number two. Uh, we've done that through bilingual, through our bilingual, I'm sorry, bilingual parent advisory committee with monthly meetings as well as our joint 76 uh, teachers and parents collaborating 
uh, with planning events such as our data event, our make repair, our health care, which has been very successful, uh, had uh, very good outcomes and been very happy to make uh, those community uh, connections. Uh, increasing family participation in education. Once again, all these areas we've completed, we don't always going to be an expectation of ongoing presence and being able to uh, add any sort of minor adjustments. Uh, and last but not least, continue to expand to partnerships. We've increased partnerships with local businesses and other local nonprofit groups, uh, including but not limited to our Longwood Community Church, Joel, Lovers, and uh, that have provided us opportunities for food supplies and family outreach. Um, and you know, I, I would imagine that um, with our community partners, it's been very beneficial for all events we've had and all the opportunities that we've had for communication. Looking at with the excellence of communication, we broke up this slide into some highlights of the three schools that are doing. A lot of them, you know, kind of throughout all three schools, but I'll also speak on Dr. Frederick's behalf today. For very some of the highlights of Jim and Pablo were the Friday updates to copies of the principals. Kindergarten orientation. We screened both preschool and kindergarten in positive control forms. Uh, if you don't know what those are, those are those school year, humble years, and it's in E. Or positive behavior years. Positive behavior control forms. Um, there are a purple sheet that uh, we have copied with some very good And uh, depending on the building, I mean, you can take So, we go um, over at Dynamite, uh, we've been continuing with our monthly family reading and computer nights. Now, we have to our monthly reading and family reading and technology nights for next year. Um, we've had great turnouts with those, um, a lot of interaction with that. The uh, deal was updates at the home each week are interactive with links and community events. Um, we did something new this year with our Google Language Cultural Festival. It wasn't the event, was it? We opening up to yeah, uh, it was new this year. Uh, it was kind of cool. They heard the back when she came on and see what's going on. That was, uh, that was they had a very good turn on. Um, Diamond Lake is supposed to host a lot of PTO events, uh, especially with uh, Diamond Lake or Fairhaven. Uh, we just kind of housed over there. And our fall and spring book fairs are highly attended, um, highly um, staffed, and pretty successful. And of course, at the middle school, uh, we continue with many events, many out, uh, reaching out with communications, sweeping spirit snap, that word snap, I found it. Um, using Twitter and other social media, uh, getting that out is it's really kind of neat because you're at a concert and boom, it just goes out. So I'm pretty excited. <coughs> We get both ends of the spectrum, so we get the fifth graders coming up for fly out day, they're going to but we also segue into high school and we continue with those articulation needs and also parent needs for that transition to high school. And on top of it, if you're aware of anything, you are at the multiple concerts, um, sporting events, athletic events, uh, school basketball, etc. So, but many of these events. I share them all three of the schools. So to conclude our work um, this year, as you saw, a lot of our targets have been completed, but the work doesn't continue. So just because we accomplished the target or excuse me, accomplished an expectation or met that, that specific target, we still can continue with the professional development. So we continue to develop our money for our price subject. So the work on our you know, short long term facility advances so just continues continuous improvement. We're looking at updating the expectations for next year. So I know based on some feedback um, that the uh, board has given me as far as looking at my work this year with um, an evaluation format is looking at a developing learning framework for the dual language program, um, also looking at instructional technology standards as well as social emotional learning standards. So those will be some new expectations that we'll be looking at for next year. Um, also clearly define those roles and responsibilities you know, we just had it to create a roles and responsibilities organization chart, but I see going forward just to clearly define you know, delineating what we do, how we do it, and have um, so people can see that we have a large administrative team, but we all do wear a lot of um, different 
enhance and how are they uh, maximizing the efficiencies of our district. Um, we are also standardizing our data on job descriptions, so they'll be included um, not only for teachers and the content, but all of us as far as administrators, as well as all of our support staff. Um, all of us are doing a more concentrated effort um, updating the website and pages for our departments and for our schools so that parents and community members have the most up to date and current and relevant information. Um, by annual district 76 vision, um, required that we sent out the mail to all community members uh, right prior to um, the referendum. We got a lot of great feedback from that, and it's also a great exercise for us to kind of look back and reflect on great things for doing this year and get some taxpayers to see what they're investing their money in. Um, so we're going to make that by annual, um, hopefully, to all of our constituents. Um, and again, continue to focus on professional excellence. We believe that that's a priority. We have good staff, good leaders in our buildings. Our kids are ultimately going to continue to grow and do well. So we'll keep up the higher rate of training and retain um, the best people and the most highly qualified people that we can. So our next step for, um, to put all this in place and make this more actionable is to meet the Professional Advisory Committee, which is free teachers from each of our buildings. Um, we meet four times a year, so our first meeting um, for the next school year, which will have some new membership on it, um, will be on August 2nd. We'll share this with them, we'll get their feedback on what they think should be priorities as far as um, you know, outlining the goals and articulating them and what they see is to be measurable and doable um, for this year for them. Um, we're also, like I said, going to continue to expand the collaboration and ownership and responsibility of leadership with our teachers so they have um, a vested interest in continuing to work hard and doing what's right for kids. Um, we're going to keep this process proactive so if we see things and we're going to respond to them based on your feedback and based on feedback you get from our community and make sure that this also follows a continuous improvement and growth cycle. We'll communicate the outcomes. This will be is public. We'll make sure that we send this out to parents. Um, in the email just so they know that it's A on our website and we all work with done this year since it's over the summer. And then um, we'll present our updated goals um, to all of you at the August um, board meeting, um, August 21st, um, 21st of the day. So that's been our work this year. It's actually the past two years. Um, I feel like we've kind of come to a nice stopping point to establish some new goals, um, celebrate some successes with things that we've completed, and just continue on the path. Yeah, so can you um, clarify the process here in terms of developing goals we discussed here, like in terms of when you want the input from the board, is that moment now to go on the page you already had, or is it in August? When do you want us to have Conversation about the goals. I'd be happy to take feedback now. People have feedback now. But then in August, when we meet with the teachers, we'll present you a draft as we did in the past. We present the draft of um, the August goal, which is the 17 18 goals. And then at that time in August, we'll have time to say, This is great, please get this, or we'll focus on this. So you meet now and in August. So can we go back to the future? So, board, this, this is a moment of a couple of sounds like we're going to give some feedback or end react to this list that they've already taken from us. Is there anything else to expect to be on here building on the prior goals that are already on the prior pages? So, some of those goals will continue, right? The prior pages. And this is just additional stuff, right? So I took those a lot of them were based on just feedback that I got from my evaluation team. We kind of had the year status update. And those are things that I know um, some of you had mentioned in feedback. Um, the standards that we want to see, what specifically were you know, some administrators doing. Um, you know, make sure the website stays up to date. One of the things that we've talked about over time has to do with language, and I'm wondering if this goal of learning framework for dual language that can probably be a part of it, but if we don't have a broader 
what the broader progress on from the point of view about the language beyond just the full language program, but how language aligns to the programs at the high schools, what we do when we do dual language. Unless dual language is have we determined it's all going to go past the grade? So I guess I'm saying I think it would be helpful for us to have a point of view type statement or something in terms of here's how we think about language in general, language acquisition, and rather than maybe you distinguish Spanish, but are there other needs that we have? Or opportunities that we have to address language. So that's on that. Does that make sense? Okay, well, did anyone else have reactions to this list? So, um, prior that goals are considered ongoing, you can look at those in the judgment that is prior. It, it, like, this is just a really good document. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of do looking back and kind of, okay, so we're going to have to take something not great, but we don't establish those responsibilities. Those are probably always the update. Mm -hmm. Just kind of keep those bits in the like, uh, call and thinking it may not make it on the whole to the next citation page. Which I might have to do with the skills required to fully support. The era implementation that we had, we spent a couple of years adopting, developing our implementation of era. It's been implemented, correct? Right? Yeah. So, my question would be how do we continue to develop so that we don't really get the most out of that implementation and which is successful and then and the skills and the speed according to what we require? I don't know if you in the last presentation or in the past few weeks that time. I'm not sure if I'm going to go to the next one. I'm not sure Chicago. 
um, and our role as underwriter is to um, just talk to the investors um, in the banks in terms of these um, other investors. Um, that is our role in this. Um, prior to you today, um, we're close with the Board of Education, um, Eric, the Bottom, um, and the referendum plan, um, and um, some of the financial restrictions that you saw on our website. QMA is the other firm that's um, going to be involved in this, and they are acting as your financial advisor. Um, and they have kind of the uh, fiduciary duty to the district um, to account for your interests. And we work closely with them, and the firm asks people to provide them in the future, too. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, so, this is finance update. Uh, we have a market update. The general look at the timing of uh, the draw schedule for the construction projects. Uh, two different finance options, and then close out with the conclusion and any questions you might have. Market update. Um, so for the uh, newer board members, uh, AAA MMD is the benchmark. Not the useful industry. Um, so these are to be thought of as the best and best credits in everything um, in our business. Uh, prices or trades a spread to them. The wider the spread, the worse spread quality of your pockets. So this is where MFPs have been during the past five years. Kind of put a little larger context. Uh, back in November, when we first uh, started working on this, the 20 year MMP was at 2.83%. In December, it was at 4.3%. Uh, and then in January, when we actually approved the resolution, it was at 2.76%. Uh, and declining nicely. Uh, Somewhat rough to say, but chaos and growth is going to be fine. So the rates continue to drop. The green line, the next slide, is where we are currently. So this is the entire yield curve from years from to 30. Uh, so a little bit higher than we were in 2016, but still on a historical basis. Extremely well, extremely good time here on this market. The next two slides are from the market commentary that William Blair publishes that's online every week. He just gives highlights of the previous week and also has a ton of market data information that we've seen even then. the timing portion of this. So when issuing tax return bonds, there's two important IRS requirements to consider. Um, first is that the industry needs to spend or obligate 5% of the bond on the issued proceeds in six months of issuance. Um, right now, the industry is on track to spend approximately 6% around November 2017. And the bond will be issued in August of 2017 right now, so we meet that requirement. Um, and the district must spend the entire bond proceeds within three years. Um, and um, as of right now, um, our are set to wrap up in December 2018, so once again, we meet that requirement. Uh, referendum authority. Allows you to issue bonds uh, anytime up to five years after the referendum. Um, again, we're well within that limit. So we will try to actually go. I don't understand the difference between number two and the split. What's the difference between spending all that in three years and issuing bonds after five years? Uh, so the probably a better percentage. So the right kind of authority just means when you go, you can issue a bond at any time five years after the passes. You can do it this year, next year, two years from now, whatever the case is. The second point is that, next second bullet point, is that once you do issue bonds, you have to spend the proceeds for the future. That was the way you have to spend the bond within three years, not at the referendum. Uh, 
So within a low or stable interest rate environment, issuing bonds close to the time you need growth seems to be usually the best strategy. Um, the best way to think about that is you're not paying interest on money you don't desire. It's a low or stable bond, the best approach. The increased rate environment, uh, you're better off locking your interest rate before they can rise uh, even further. Um, but that is subject to the district spending. And then final consideration is that if a portion of the bonds can be issued and qualified, um, which is uh, less than ten million dollars in a single account year by right? issuer, sure. uh, that's a benefit because pay qualified rates tend to be lower um, than non pay qualified rates the range here is five to twenty five basis points. Uh, and that can vary throughout the year, and that can vary throughout the week. So just depends on the banks you reach and what their costs are. The next three pages are the proposed construction spending schedule um, that the district provided. Better see the answering questions by app on this. Yeah, this is the most like uh, said, the schedule that us and White kind of developed as far as the plan of spending from now until June 2018. So based on the model. Sorry, December 2018. So based on the well, our objective schedule was to spend all our bond, all our recommended money by the end of December 2018. So that's why I thought it was a good time to issue all this work. Now, all this is the market type of construction being used. Okay, so one um, part of this section I want to highlight for a little bit um, later on in the presentation is. Um, Slide eight, uh, August of 2018, uh, the cumulative total spend was a little over seven million dollars. So just keep that in mind. Then again, the highlight here is that the district issued all the bonds now if they so choose because all the spending um, for years five percent of seven million dollars. So now on to the two other options. So, just to be clear, um, William Blair, Neil Brad, and the PMA are natural advisor and work together on these. We had discussions about them there um, last week to review the options. So, these are consensus presentation. Uh, so, our first option uh, this is just a consensus between us and the PMA. The options are what Thank you. 
the resolution is set up for the resident to pull up the parameters of the line issue and then we'll go out them and authorize the line over there and kind of delegate them the authority to actually agree to the same. In the sense that the resolution will outline what the limits are. So in July, we want our resolution. We will have it in action. Correct. And, and are we looking for direction on which approach to take? Uh, no, uh, we will continue with the options. Yeah, I, I think we will not do exactly the direction now. I think uh, we're going to probably have to look at the race and see if it's going to change down the line of uh, I think this is perspective right now we be going for um, the nation that the option is not going to but that's the direction we will eventually be going for it. So I think based on where we're at currently, we'll probably be going to have to do a little more to keep um, this further, keep these structures or keep those structures and then we'll talk about it. So I think the board is holding uh, uh, this so based on the information that I can hear, if you were to come to July's meeting recommending to to run a approach, an approach, I would support it. Anybody else want to weigh in? I agree. I think the significance of the 1.2% rate might increase, in my opinion, is very little likelihood. I think the second option is kind of more risk responsible. That was very little bit more risk. Um, but I think it is kind of a great decision. If I have made this decision. Right. Unless things change significantly in actual life. So the only other slide actually touched on a lot of this. I don't think it's worth mentioning that we do do this. Finally, 
These items uh, have been discussed and will be discussed at this meeting. First up is the resolution to the unvisible agenda. Items under the under the omnibus vote agenda are considered pushing the envelope on a controversial and will be approved by one motion. If anyone board member, staff, and visitors wish to have a separate vote on any item or item, that item or items will be pulled from the omnibus vote agenda and put on a different link. Are there comments or questions on the omnibus vote agenda? I think I had two. So Eric, I think that the question I had is that the omnibus vote agenda, including uh, some of the reports on our spending, right? So at this point, I'm reading it right, except for our revenues are only 67%, right? Like the end of the fiscal year of this month. So, it's actually less than that. Yeah, our revenues are about 58%. So, um, but that means right now for us is we still have, we received about $4 million in tax revenue the first of this month. We have one more payment on June 29th. That's the last property tax first payment. Uh, we expect it to be about $1.1 million. If that's the, uh, that's the case, our protections are right as far as our property tax revenue projections go, and we're still missing roughly $400,000 in savings, which is about 65, or about 30% less than what we would expect to receive in this emergency budget, specifically with that. We have uh, a lot of special ed personnel payments, about $200,000 in that, which is the, uh, statewide, we're about to be behind for every single school district. We still expect to see those, but we won't be writing that until next this week. Yeah, and, and this looks like we're very much aligned with where we have any current numbers. I, I guess I never realized that we get 92% into the year. It's our city had so low. Exactly. It feels better that we did receive $4 million already from the tax revenue. We put it about 90%. We put it about 88% of the we expect to receive the last property tax payment with pushes up to about 95 percent budget as far as the revenues go. And really, the, the main thing is we're, we're going to be about 50, uh, about 550 thousand dollars lower budget as far as our state payments and some of our federal payments. We hope we're able to see those next year. Uh, again, and obviously, we decide to speed up the payments. So, if this is a statewide issue, we're going to be receiving an excess of the continent, but we're just not going to see that revenue right now. It's not just such a cash basis. So, and no cash flow concerns? No, uh, PMA has had their financial value, they're the ones that are constantly analyzing our cash flow. And with no concerns, we still have that healthy, uh, with about 75% pump down expenditure to pump down ratio, and also spending ratio. And about 75% of the year, Reserves to fund our expenditures. So we do have very helpful fund balances. And, um, there's no cash flow issues as far as what we have mass or anything like that. So we're borrowing. So we get some of those concerns. So, no, really, there's some property tax issues. I mean, late in the month, now the five lines are. There's no cash flow concerns. Okay, the other question I have is about our charter fees for the month. Is that going to be thousand? Is that how we're looking at much from us? Now that we're done with the negotiation process. It's, it's, it's usually about a month, a month and a half behind as far as the billing. So I'm going to have to review exactly where we're at as far as those issues that's unusually high. We wouldn't normally have that much. A lot of that is just about private work. A lot of uh, so the administrative review of contracts. I know that we're four months behind. That, we're that might be what it was. Okay. Yeah, we had some, a lot of reviews that have been going out. We've seen a lot of contractual reviews. Okay. So I would say our high points are early in late April. Um, 
they were getting out of range or some of the construction and stuff like that. Makes sense. All right. Any other questions on this? Okay. 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 Yes. 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 The next item is the resolution for the prevailing wage rates, an annual requirement of us. It reads the resolved the Board of Education of Nine and Lake School District 76 adopts the prevailing wage rate resolution as presented. Comments or questions on this item? I just had one. As we are undergoing these many relationships with people who relate to our facilities in essence, whose responsibility is it to make sure that the prevailing wage rates are there? Does the construction engineers, the firm, the, the architect, all those others, are they responsible for that? They actually are. The construction manager, the primary ones who are responsible for all the prevailing wage rates. They know our contracts, all the buildings. Uh, that way, the most qualified bidder. So they're the ones that most skills that we do. Um, as needed, we'll be with our attorney again and trying to crack the attorney deals with them too. But um, they're very well versed in the with any requirements. So they are the ones that will write the skills. There's a lot of other way to the skills that they write. There's a really way to follow uh, performance bonds, things like that, that are part of the contracts. So they're accountable. We are legally. Just the numbering 
type of set that's incorrect. Correct. There's a rich like Troy that's on the second to last page that just type out. Yes, the one that's for it's just an empty concern. So the one that is for that is correct. All right then. Any further comments or questions? We have a motion to approve. Can you bring us up to speed from where we left off this conversation at the last meeting? 
Absolutely. On June 13th, we had a committee that was comprised of Dr. Sharon Woods, or probably Seymour Schwartz, our wonderful representative, and myself. So we interviewed three firms, and it was Gil Bain, Pepper, and White. So our architect has their own construction firm, but it was a nice. So we decided to interview them as well. Um, we asked about 10 questions, a lot of provided presentation if they wanted to. So after uh, the course of our review, we recommended rank them in uh, Pepper was first, White was second, Gil Bain was third. Um, we thought the Pepper brought the most experience. They had an excellent presentation with a plan for this summer specifically. So uh, they really came in with the presentation and said, here's a defined timeline, here's the bid steps for this summer. Here's how the plan did it help. We get as much work done this summer as we can. So we really recommend it to improve that. Um, if you have construction manager, this summer's work, it all goes well. We obviously recommend that we continue on. This is going to be a good value to pay to see how we perform. Because um, they did promise a lot, they promised to work on some very short time frames on how they're going to get to something like that. So we're extremely impressed. Um, each firm, uh, the other two firms did really well. They had each other own customized as to how we write them, but the far and away, that was on. Size and choice. And White did recommend them as far as the third part of they like to work with in some of the projects. So they've done some very small districts. They worked really well as a partner. We thought that was we thought that was very uh, genuine and that was right someone who could other kind of key and far in this work. My one takeaway from the meeting in addition to what Eric provided was um, very good each of the terms, the questions in advance. And um, one company, Gil Bain, just came in and answered questions. They gave us an overview of the company, provided some nice materials. Um, but I believe that Pepper really took each question and wrote it down and provided them with um, documentation. So that's how they address each question. So I asked uh, Eric to just bring the copy and stuff, just what each firm provided as you can see. Um, and as he said, I think I was in a better phrase, just move it all the way. Yeah, it is, I guess it's hard to see. I didn't do that in the third one. But each village you know, is kind of provided a general overview of their, their organization and structure. But um, you'll make a you know, uh, your paid document on this text, timeline, and um, how they projected the area to be done. So they kind of, you know, skipped the overview and said, this is the work we're going to get done. And that was kind of a sitting that your seat on the site. It was not very confident that the work was going to be able to perform. And I, I don't have a lot of bad stuff to say about the other two firms, but uh, Pepper's department, they, they were really the most of this group. So, we are going to be recommending for this summer's work, and that's so important to somebody else that we'll discuss maybe not initial approval, uh, and unless we decide to change it. So last meeting, you just you explained that the relationship with the construction manager is like that of the relationship with a, an architect or an attorney where it's not a bid and cost only evaluation. So, but do we have a way of, or do we have a way of assuring ourselves that Pepper has appropriate fees or competitive or consistent with the market price tech fees? That's a big yes, because you are correct. It's not the, you don't need, you're not required to look at the process to select a construction manager. The next phase we have our into is negotiation, very similar to how we talk to the right we like the proposal, we've got the relationship with the district, now you want to negotiate your fees. Uh, at that point, the time the fees are not agree to walk away, and we discuss them free labor from their perspective. So we will be comparing the fees that they present, and we really got to have We do a research call around the other area districts to see what they're being charged with cover based on the scope of the projects and uh, dollar value. So we compare it to uh, similar districts and also similar construction manager firms. The fees are pretty industry standard, and what I've been explaining is a little less of variance than we have with architect. But before we sign the contract, we're actually 
do their due diligence and don't send it by to their charges. So shouldn't this action be that we're not hiring them or that we're hiring them pending negotiations? Should it should say hiring pending negotiations or should it say the Board of Education approves recommendations for student negotiations? Yeah, I think on the, the memo itself it says, it, it, I think that's probably the resolution should be, we'll seek the negotiation. Uh, Board of Education's consent, or we consent to the administration to seek the negotiated contract that covers the construction management service. So it's kind of giving us instructions to proceed to the next phase. So yes, we're not signing the contract. We have no contract in front of us. This phase is really going to move us to enter into those negotiations. So if you want to read it, um, that last two sentences of the memo, you go into the second attachment. Three last sentences there. Lays out the attachment. Okay, that makes sense. Lisa's point, right? The resolution itself is for it as. Right. Yeah, so that's it. You're agreeing that we don't the word it should be something different. So how about we it say be resolved the Diamond Lake School District Services the Board of Education uh, gives consent to the administration to seek to negotiate a contract for ever construction management services. Period, right? Does that seem does that seem like what we really they're really asking us to go on? So, are, are, are you following me? Give me physical look. Uh, is, before we do that, though, any other comments or questions on this topic? Okay, so, again, this is being resolved that I'm going to use the District 76 Board of Education is consent to the administration to to seek to negotiate a contract with the for construction management services. They would wish you to approve. So moved. Second. Smart? Yes. Steele? Yes. Oh. Yes. Chancellor, yes. Warner? Jeffrey? Yes. Hello. Yes. Our last item on this personnel related, it is all the Diamond Lake Services Board of Education accepts and approves personnel items as to the on the business agenda. It includes three new hires and two resignations. Comments or questions on this item? Okay, we have a motion to approve. So moved. Kessler, yes. Neil? Yes. Kelman? Yes. Smarty? Yes. Walker? Jeffrey? Yes. Camilla? Yes. So that concludes our business agenda for the evening. Next up is board discussion. Next up is a freedom of information request. This has been fulfilled. Notice of communications, we have none. At this time, we open the floor to the public for any comments and positions on any additional agenda item. Having no public, we move to others. Others that I saw on the daily real estate that Yeah, they do a drug and have the 
It's well, in their been doing it, uh, in the house, basically, it's said that they had expanded the basement of the building when they were able to expand services. And I guess, I believe the article said that that online is split somewhere between 40 and 45 students um, that we would be impacted by this in the future. So we can end the school. All right, so that's All right, any other others? Um, actually, it looks like on the uh, the unmade issue that we talked about before, that uh, the applicants or the people are the businesses in the process of reapplying. Of what? Of reapplying. Okay. For, uh, for the zoning change, for the variance, uh, for the shooting range. Um, okay. But last week was that earlier, or late last week, they had submitted papers, they had missed something, so they were going to submit very shortly. So this will come up uh, at a, in the near future. Any other others? We need to discuss the board uh, <laughs> Board members potentially going to jail. The <laughs> line <laughs> will be on the board so badly that they fall off my Yes, so a reminder to anyone who is interested in running uh, an election to get onto the board, you may have people take the the petitions where they see people sign support for someone who wants to become elected. Other people may do that on the behalf, but then they may sign that they did that on the behalf. And this is a case of the board member signed it instead of who solicited the uh, signature sent in. The loss of the years of the people that signed students to positive it's a step number, so they basically it's sort of not specific. It basically a step number sound. And it's just really good. Okay. Another the number of them is there, so I can tell us who would be two words and right? <laughs> All right, are there others? Yes. 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 Yes.